Hello and welcome to High Ground Gaming. Happy New Year. Mag says Happy New Year here. She's showcasing our game here. Architects of the West Kingdom. <laughs> okay, Mags. All right. Say hi to all your fans. And she's all excited here, as you can tell. Anyway, uh, this is a game we've been... Yeah, she's looking at the price, $55. That's how much it was at the game store. We didn't pay that much, but that's how much it was at our local game store, which unfortunately went out of business last year. Um, but anyway, yeah. All right, so... <laughs> Anyway, okay, Max, you can go now. So we're going to do an Architects of the West Kingdom unboxing in our new studio here in our new place in Winton, Kentucky, Winton. Max. <laughs> Max is giving a show here. What are you looking at? I just cleaned that, so I can't be looking at any food. Anyway, uh, this is Architects of the West Kingdom here. We're going to be opening it up and uh, showing you here. And the studio will get better, too. We, uh, we're going to be getting a professional light hopefully soon we've been looking at a couple of them although the lighting isn't too bad in here now the background's a little weird i just got to cover things up there but anyway this is the uh, first of the west kingdom games architects we have a uh, paladin and viscount which we did an unboxing with earlier yeah manx likes this game a lot you can tell there you go As those of you guys who know miss mags lost her best buddy mr brody a couple months ago so and she's a happy girl Anyway, this is Architects of the West Kingdom, and we're finally going to get this open. We've had this, I don't know, probably sitting around for a, a good, well, I don't know, at least probably close to a year now. Um, somewhere close to a year. Maybe not quite a year, but anyway, we've had it for a while. And uh, so we're itching to play the solo mode, and uh, we want to do a trilogy um, game day at our, uh, for our game group. So we're going to open this up. All right, Max. <laughs> Thanks. It's all excited there. All right, so let me find my. Uh, let me find. Where is my? I don't know where my uh, scissors are here. Uh, I thought I had them up here. Give me one second here. If not, we'll just use our hands. All right. So here we go. Let's take a look and see what's inside the box. Finally. Okay, we're gonna have to get up now. All right, this has been a long time in coming. We have played this game before, and one of our other guys in our game group does have this game. So, all right, it's finally opened up. Finally. All right, so let's see what's inside the box here. All right, so let's see. So we have our Renegade Studios. Oops. Game book as we get in front of the light. Sorry about that. All right, so yeah, so just the games that are in it. Let's see if we have any of these games uh, or want to get any of the games. Let's see any really right here. Yeah, I've seen that game quite a bit. Circus Puppy, but I haven't gotten it. Uh, Arboretum. I played that one. It's okay. It's a card game. Um. Yeah, other than the West Kingdom games, I really don't see anything. Yeah, that's kind of a sh an earlier one from the uh, Raiders of the North Sea, which is a good game. But the other two expansions, they're okay, but they're not that great. Um, Architect is Architects, Paladins. Yeah, we have Paladins. Oh, this has Viscounts in it. Viscounts might not have been out by the time with this production copy. Like uh, This is a game we've been interested in, Bargain, Bargain Quest. Possibly checking out. Yeah, we do have uh, Circadian's First Light, which we played a little bit of. We haven't played a full game yet, but we played a couple half games of it. Proving Grounds is a good solo solo game. We have that one. That's a good one. This one I've heard a lot of good things about. Um, I've seen somebody talk about it. I can't remember who it was, but Revolution 19, 1820. It's kind of a hidden gem. So definitely check that one out. We do have this passing through, passing through Petra, it's still sealed. So that's in our shelf of opportunity. Uh, Trajan, an excellent game by Stefan Feld. Alti Plano, we have that one. Castell, we have that one. Here we go. We'll get into some of the games that we do have. Ex Libras, no. Uh, North Sea Epilogues, I haven't seen that one. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to check that one out. 
All right, and then there you go. So, yeah, some decent games. Renegade Games has some good games. There it is of the North Sea. Oh, yeah, we do have this, the uh, Steam app. We have the Steam game version, which is a good version. And Tabletop Lanterns. I played that once, I think. It was okay. Not necessarily one of my favorites, but... All right, let's start with the rule book here. So we have Architect's rule book. Let's see if I can get it on the other side here so I... I don't get it in the light, but unfortunately, the light is over there. There's an architect's rule book here. Let's see what's inside this. It looks like it's two rule books, or well, one rule book and another book. So, your components here. Sorry. <laughs> We're getting used to our dimensions in our new limited space area. As before, we had tons of space. Now, we don't have quite so much, but. We'll get this into a working studio sooner or later. So, first time players playing the game. So, this has got a very unique uh, unique mechanic of uh, work replacement. Or worker placement, I should say. I always call it work replacement. And the guy in my group makes fun of me. Well, I, I, it does. Games do replace work. So, <laughs> um, But anyway, it's work, work worker placement. And... Uh, you have like a bunch of guys, and you, I think it's up to 20 guys, and you put them all on the board. And uh, if you don't, if you once you run out of workers, then you have to recall them, or you can recall them earlier. And there's other other reasons for it, but to do it. But these are guys you can hire, uh, kind of similar. The art West Kingdom games have some, some similar mechanics, um, and they have differences. This is probably the lightest of the three, or oh, it is the lightest of the three. Paladins being the heaviest and Viscounts being the most smooth and refined, which is the one that came out last. So, yeah, I, I like both of them. This is this is probably third on my list. Although we got, I haven't played this one nearly as much as Paladins and Viscounts. Paladins probably being still my favorite, even though it is the most complicated. And Viscounts um, could replace that once I get some more plays of that. But Viscounts is definitely the most streamlined, I think, and the polished of the three. Uh, virtue track so you have a virtue track in this one black markets and i think part of it too with this one it has like a black market and some nefarious things in it so that's might be why it's part of my kind of cr contradicts with my christian nature i guess you could say i don't know but you know not necessarily but um all right and then back is which is always good to have in the back though is your quick standard setup how to set it up quickly and your resource cards and stuff like that. Okay. So let's see what this other booklet is here. Apprentice Abilities Building Effects Solo Play, which is... Oops, sorry. One of the reasons why we got it. Plus, we wanted to complete our trilogy tier. So this is Apprentice Abilities. All the different apprentices you can hire. Again, sorry about the spacing. We're just using our iPad there to record it just because it's quick and easy eventually we'll get our laptop with the cameras and all that good setup there but ipad is quick and easy to do an unboxing playthrough definitely won't use the ipad with okay solo play which is what we're going to learn how to do which is why we want to get this punched out and set up variable setup all right so now we'll get to the components here so these are the player boards I think these are the, she's a solo AI player, which I believe she is one of the ones you can play against. But, let's see the quality of these actually appear to be, they're not too bad. They're actually, they're pretty good cardboard stock. They're glossy, definitely, but she's one of them. And I think he's the other one, Constantine. I think these are the two oops, solo ones you can play against. Again, sorry for the lighting there, I'm getting in the way of the light. Which will be solved, hopefully, in a few other unboxings. Yes, I think she is the one. Yeah, I think she's... She, those two are the uh, solo AIs you play as. And then here is the ones you can play as. Rudolph. He has a, both sides. I think one is a is an asymmetric side, and the other one is a... Uh, Non-asymmetric means they mean that they're all the same. So I think, let me just check it quickly, yeah. So I think this one, yeah, this one appears, this one is the asymmetric, I mean the symmetric one. 
And then this one is the asymmetric. Need a little bit different resources, I think. Right. I don't know. I can't remember which one is which. But anyway, on one's asymmetric and one's symmetric. Doesn't really matter for the unboxing purposes. And Frederick is another one you can play as. So let me just double check here, see if I can quickly spot it. Actually, they appear to be look the same. The only difference, as I can see, is is this right here is the ability. So this must be the asymmetric side it gives them gives them an ability. So that's it. Yeah. So this is going to be the. Ada, that's the asymmetric side, and this is the symmetric side, I'm guessing. Okay, and Caroline, it's the asymmetric side, and then the symmetric side here. But the iconography is very similar in all the Architects games, which is makes it learning, going from one to the other, a little, a little easier to, to learn. It's pretty much the same. I mean, there are a few differences in the other two games from this one, but and then you get your coins here, which I think I definitely want to order some um, metal coins for this game. Since there's three games of it, I might as well order some yep. coins from it. So this is a good thickness too. Decent thickness in here. And let's see what else we got here. And we get our game board here, which Is good quality. It's six fold. So just to show you what that looks like. Let's see if I can. I'll try to set it down and uh, after I get everything done, I'll, uh, I'll show you the game board a little bit. And then you get your cards here. So these are your. Um, oh, yeah, these are your debts. That's right, debts and. Uh, I think all three of the games have these, if I'm not mistaken. So you have your debts, so a debt card right here, and that's like it, you lose two uh, victim victory points if you have a debt, but if you're able to pay it off, you get a, a virtue, because paying a debt off is a good thing. Paying your bills is good. And then you have your, I think these are for the, um, when you're building the cathedral, these are benefits you can get from building the cathedral things you get yep. sometimes you get virtue sometimes you get gold and a virtue sometimes you'll get other other different things in them that does other other different things you can get in them sometimes you get an extra card or an extra stat or something this gives you two wood and a virtue so that's helping to build a cathedral. And you have to be virtuous to help to build a cathedral because you can't have any people who are nefarious and uh, evil to building the cathedral, building God's house. Or, but you, And vice versa, if you're, if you're virtuous, you can't go to the black market. So these are just different black market items you can get. Is that right? So this will be some resources you can get if you go to the black market, which is going to be always a good amount of resources, but it gets you negative virtue. And then here... These are just basically um, multipliers for the resources, for like five, whatever you put on here. So it could be wood, stone, I think marble. Wood, stone, and marble, I think, are the main resources. And gold, actually, of course. All right, and then let's see what else we got here. And then you have your, uh, let's go through these first. And now we'll go through this first. So you have your um, cards. It's been a while since we've done an unboxing video, obviously. You probably haven't seen one on the channel. But I think these are linen finish. They feel like they are. Yeah. So this is just a little guide for the solo setup, play, and setup. And the solo play and rules. Sorry. And then two player versus a bot setup. So two players requires you to use some kind of a bot. It's kind of a little bit of a pain, so. But it's not too bad. And then these are all of the, there's two different kinds in here. There's the yellow backed ones, and then there's the, let's see here. Oh, these might all be the same. Yeah, 
actually they're all the old back DAI ones, but some of them are black and brown and some of them are are just blank. I think you might be able to set up your own. Oh actually no, some of them yeah, these are meant to, I think these might be your starting ones. So the starting ones right here for the AI. And you'll make up an AI deck depending upon how hard you want it. And some of them it basically tells you where the AI goes and preference and order and that kind of stuff. Guard house, black market. These are just different locations on the board, worker placement locations. But anyway, these are just the deck of cards that you use to set up the AI deck uh, for the solo play. And then here are your um here are your uh just different buildings you can build. Aqueduct and tells you the resources it takes to build at the victory points at the end and a benefit you get. Like this one will give you a gold for every whatever that green symbol means. I can't remember offhand. I think it's for every worker you might have with a that icon on it. Um, this one is allows you to uh, round up some of your workers or steel workers. I can't remember which one that is. And then, but anyway, they give you different benefits and uh, different abilities. This one, I think, allows you to cancel a debt or something like that, or flip a debt card. This is a certain amount of victory points per whatever workers with a axe symbol on it. So these are different buildings you can build at the course of the game using different resources. All right, so let's see what else we got here. So there's quite a few buildings you can build. Probably about half the stack are buildings you can build. And then the other half is going to be the different people you can hire. Yeah, like the workers right here. This is a guy with an axe symbol. So he's an acolyte. So he's going to allow you to do... It gives you a, a power. And uh, I can't remember where these are. I think you can discard these guys for a power two or something like that. There's different abilities that you can get depending upon whether you... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know... Um, take them on into your party, whatever, um, take them, or you can discard them to get a power on it, too. And these have different abilities on them. Some of them, you need them to build buildings, you need them to do other certain tasks and other things, they give you different benefits. This allows you to flip, think, flip a deck card or something like that and give you, gives you two wood every time you flip a deck card or something like that. Every time you go to the... The iconography is very good in this, too. Every time you go to the guardhouse and free workers, maybe... You get to free two workers or something like that. Um, this low lowers your virtue because it allows you to go to the black market. So anyway, just different abilities. And these will be like a market of cards. There's a market of uh, eight cards on at once in rows of two. And they have different costs and everything. But there's a whole, whole host of these cards. Okay. And then we'll get into the workers, which you have a plenty. I'm not going to empty open up each one of them, but this is basically, I think it depends upon the player count, but I think you start off with most, if not all of these workers, I think, even in a two-player game, I could be wrong on that one. Um, and then you have your virtue marker up here, which if you're familiar with paladins, they have virtue markers like that too in paladins. And I think viscounts too might have them. I'm not sure. And I think it's just paladins. But anyway, that's a, uh, yeah, that's Miss Mags. That's, that's there. And then your little workers... Oops, I dropped one out of uh, Workers are just standard little meeples right here. Purple one there. And uh, as I dropped some of the stuff here. All right. So you have your colors of purple. Looks uh, like blue. No, actually, these are the marble resources. Square, square. And these are nice wooden resources here. They feel like plastic. Plastics are. These are the marble ones which you use to build the cathedral primarily. Or the AI is worth points for them. These are your little wood resources. Again, plasticky wood ones. A little smaller than games like Peace for Owen and stuff. These are your brick resources. So, brick. So, brick was the other resource. Uh, and then you have your red player. So the red player has its own set of meeples there. And then yellow. So I think this goes up to, I want to say five players, I think. Green. Blue. And then the 
course, your gold, which I'm not going to take these out, but these are little gold pieces. If you see gold, you see... And, of course, baggies in here. Again, sorry for the lighting there. So, it looks okay in the room, but it is a little dark, probably, on the thing. So, but we'll be working to improve that. So, I just wanted to show you here. This is the game board here. So, I'll just go around the game board. Um, so, on the upper left corner here, well, you have your, on the left side, you have your virtue track, which is the purple. And then once it gets down into the negatives here, where the money starts showing here, actually not negatives, but once it hits, I think seven is the, six is the lowest one. And then when it gets five and lower, it starts getting into the corrupt areas there, which you start losing money and all the things that associated with doing nefarious deeds. And this right here is a track right here, the guild hall, which is a game counter which is depending upon your how many players are playing in the game i think it's uh so it's three six nine twelve in a two-player game and then three-player game it's you add four more the four-player game you add there and then these are for um i think building buildings and other things um you you are in other activities you have to give up a worker in order to do that so that goes in the guild hall there and there pretty much out for the rest of the game which i think it's those to the building and something else um either one of those two things and then here's the cathedral right here which would be a stack of cards there this is kind of like a pre-printed stack of card where after the card deck is gone you just get a virtue for every um level of the cathedral you build in so you can see it's just a gold and i think you have to give up a card or something like that in order to do the lowest level or it might be what you get I can't remember. But anyway, it's 2, 4, 7, 12, and 20 victory points. Only one person can get up to the 20, the top of the cathedral. Um, and you have to, yeah, you have to forfeit those resources in order to um, to build in the cathedral. As you can see, the top one is two marble, two gold, and a card. You have to give up a card, I think, in order to do that. So that's the cathedral, and that's the iconography of the cathedral. And then the mines, these are our worker replacement spots. So these, as many workers as fit there or go there. So the first time you place a worker there, you put one in there, and then I think, um, which gives you a, you know, just a, a brick, and then it's basically you get a brick for every worker that's there. So the second worker you put there, you'll get two bricks, the third worker, you'll get three, and so forth. The thing is, though, is that they're not going to build up too much because after a while, there's a activity, which we'll show you later, which will... Um, if there's too much too many people congregating and so you know in an area, you know soliciting kind of thing, they'll um, we can get a gold actually there for two workers in there, so that's an incentive to to build more money for every two workers there. But um, they'll get arrested and brought to the guardhouse, which initially get gets on the player board, but then eventually they'll send them to jail, and then you got to spend workers and money and all kinds of stuff to get them out later on. And then let's go over to here, which is the quarry, which is another place to get to get stone, of course. Forest to get wood. Silversmith to get coins. You can see similar mechanic to the to the brick thing there. For every one, if you're one worker you have there, you get a coin. So two workers would get two coins, three, and so forth. Um, King's storehouse. That's a way to trade resources for virtue. Kind of like a bribe system in a way, or to trade or to trade resources for marble, which is used to build a cathedral. Here is the tax stand, which gets seated with a certain amount of coins, and you can rob the tax stand, but you lose two virtue, as you can see there. Um, again, you put workers in there too. Here is the black market, which you only know, can put one worker in each space there. Um, and every so often, there's a black market reset. So if you have the most um, Debt cards or whatever, or um, whoever's the low, you know, has the most people in the black market, they'll get a negative response there. Um, here is where a workshop here is where you put work, you're going to put um, workers in it there, and you're going to also, it's going to show you, you can, that's the market of cards. This will be seated with card the cards I showed you. So the, you have to have at least one worker and they get the first column there. Two workers get the second, three, the third, and four, the fourth. But if you want to get a worker later on, like say there's one, two, three, four workers in there, you're going to say you wanted to get the worker in the third one there where the bridge starts there. You're going to have to put a coin on each of the first two workers, making them more you know, valuable there. 
because you skipped over them, and which is a mechanic that's in um, a lot of games. Um, I'm trying to think one recently I just played. Oh, Jai, not Jai Prayer. Um, one of the uh, Spice, not Spice Road. I think it's Spice Road. You know, one of the Century games, anyway. You have, to, you have to do that in order to get the card. You have to put um, coins on the other ones. Or, or resources. In this case, you put, I think you put coins. I think that's what it is. But anyway, that's there. And then on the right... Oh, that's nothing there. <laughs> so that's the whole game board there. So just to back up, that's what it looks like there. It's a very well done bit game board. Um, again, it's pretty easy to learn once you, once you get everything down. All right. So let's put this back here. All right. That's good there. Yeah, it's kind of good. Shows everything there. Probably a good level there. So that's pretty much it. Uh, just to show you the insert too. Decent insert. Nothing special. But fits everything. Um, these games have a um, a cool uh, expansion. Well, they each have their own expansion. Which I don't have any expansions yet for either one. Yeah, I think that each one of them has at least one expansion. Maybe even two. This one may have two. I think Paladins has two. Viscounts, I'm not sure. They may have two now. I know they have at least one. Um, but they also have a thing called Tommy Saga, which is um, a expansion that is usable in all three of the games. You can play different aspects of it in all three of the games. So it's kind of a neat thing. It kind of ties the trilogy together and adds more replayability to the trilogy anyway. But that's it. That's Architects of the West Kingdom by, of course, the duo of Shem Phillips and um, Shem McDonald and by Renegade Games. And... There is, they, they are coming out, if they are starting to come out with, I think they might have had a Kickstarter on it. Um, the East King, I think it's East Kingdom Games. I think that's a, that's their next trilogy they're working on. And that's kind of, looks kind of interesting too. So anyway, um, this is Architects of the West Kingdom. Definitely their best uh, yet. Um, I think a trilogy. Definitely better. Than it, while the, um, the uh, chipping one is good too. This one is, I think, rated a little bit higher. Uh, a little bit, they've got more of their footing in there, and their system is is more streamlined, I think, in, in these games. But who knows what these kingdom will bring and other games that they have out. But um, that Circadian's game too is also by um, uh, PJ, I think SJ SJ McDonald. So um, and uh, Shim Phelps again, they're great, great design team from New Zealand. So anyway, thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming with an unboxing of Architects of the West Kingdom. So stay with us as we'll be doing more unboxings and uh, hopefully some playthroughs once we get our lighting. And uh, we won't be doing the playthroughs. Well, some of the playthroughs we may do up here. But we'll streamline our background and everything too to make it a little bit more um, user-friendly. <laughs> so take care. God bless. Miss Mags again says hi. And Happy New Year to everyone. Happy 2023. And we'll see you in the next unboxing. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.